The necessity of rage, polarization, and addiction to social media profitability. This is a future headlines report in which I'm going to focus on social media tech depends on addicted, outrage, polarized society to make headlines or to make money. And I'm calling this video Rage and Hate are profit machines for social media corpo state nationalists. And that, that is literally what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fact that if social media were to see a decrease in rage, a decrease in polarization, they would experience less clicks. And if they experience less clicks, less engagements, then they lose two things. They lose advertising revenue and even more lucrative than advertising revenue, they lose data. They use, lose useful data that they can sell to marketers so marketers can figure out how to reach you and can compel you to produce their largely crappy products and services. And I say largely because the marketers, the biggest marketers are part of the corporate state nationalist the de facto corporate state nationalist party as i'm calling them and they are heavily invested in making humans rather than serving humans they have left the idea that we are made in god's image that we all have the image of god within us there's a sacredness about this there is an individual sacredness about each of us and we should be treated as individuals in and of um, ourselves and we should be met where we live in large part not completely but in large part and produce products and services that meet our needs this is the uh the somewhat the idea of what you might call capitalism not that what we have today or have had for 100 plus years is anything close to this this ultimate idea of capitalism capitalism has become essentially power it has become power the well it's become power is re re right the right of power might makes right sort of if you if you have the means to produce and create monopolies then you can start to create humans that are going to be create or buying your product or service because you've you've conditioned them to need a product or service that might actually not actually serve their best interest so this is the top headline here that I picked here from Fox Business. Ex-Google employee Big Tech's biz model is a society that is addicted, outraged, polarized. Ex-Google employee and Big Tech critic Kristen Harris on Tuesday said the business model of big social media companies is to create a society that is addicted, outraged, and polarized, among other things. How Harris co-founder and president of the nonprofit Center for Human Technology told the Senate Judiciary Committee during a Tuesday hearing on social media algorithms that companies like Google's YouTube and Facebook are profiting off of users' addiction to their platform. It's almost like having the heads of Exxon, BP, and Shell asking about, what are you doing to responsibly stop climate change? Harris said of social media companies incentives for employees to increase user engagement on their platforms their business model is to create a society that is addicted outraged polarized performative and disinformed that's just the fundamentals of how it works this is profit 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 and profit alone is basically might makes right that's underlying it profit is 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 more I'm going to say uh, socialist in nature than quote unquote capitalist because it removes the sacredness of the individual and it allows for the, the creation of increasingly, uh, con con I'll, I'll say, concentrated levels of power in the hands of the very few that enables them again to not serve the individual but to make the individual in their perverse image and an image that guarantees that they won't have to deal with their competition in the future because they have been conditioned to believe that the, the corpo state is the only state. So it's all about Apple and Google and Amazon and Facebook having absolute control over its citizens so that they don't have to worry about the, the new rise of, of the new... Because uh, it should be pointed out that in America... Maybe 40 plus percent of millionaires are new millionaires. And these new millionaires 
You know what they want? You know what they understand? How easy it is to displace the power that is with, with the rising technologies that are out there today. And every day there's a new technological threat to their power. And the only way that they can assure that they stay on top is to lock the door behind them. And that's why you see the nouveau riche are the ones that are fundamentally in, in I'll say fundamentally the drivers of this new rabid corpo state drive to assure that there is no competition because there are the new and they want to make sure they understand how easy it is to re displace the power that is that it doesn't happen to them and so they will continue to manipulate us any way shape that they can any way that they can one of the stories that we didn't get today that uh we're gonna well maybe we'll end up talking about it i don't know i might do something this weekend or not i'm not sure but Corporate America puts resources behind bill that criminalizes Christianity. That's a, a, t a slight hyperbolic title, to be sure, but it's not, not nearly as hyperbolic as, as people might think. And this is the, the so-called, what do you call it, the Equality Act or whatever, whatever Orwellian title they're giving it. They're Disney among 400 U.S. companies backing Equality Act, which experts say targets religious liberty. Basically, it goes down the road of criminalizing speech, and specifically speech, in this instance, one of the most easy ways to criminalize Christianity is just criminalize what Paul has to say about homosexuality, which he says it's a sin. And this would criminalize human beings even having the opinion that homosexuality is sin. And I'm not going to speak one way or another about what you should feel about that, but I'll just say I'm not for criminalizing the thought. Whether I agree with it or not, I'm not for criminalizing it. And these corporate state media companies, they're, most, they're excited to be able to shut down Christianity because Christianity, I'll say true, authentic Christianity, and this can take on many forms, whether you're Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, I'm not excluding any of you folks, but authentic Christianity in the sense of Christianity that rules through consent, that rules through a promise of life, not a promise of death. Whether you're Catholic, Orthodox, or Protestant, if you're part of any type of belief system within those that affords you the opportunity or the quote-unquote right to take coercive action against individuals merely for not following Christ, well, you're not Christian in my eyes. And that type of Christianity, these type of corporate state media companies could very well one day adopt for their own they they're because that's been done through the ages but but authentic christianity is a fundamental threat to their underlying assumption that you can thug on humans for reasons that don't have to do with humans thugging on others that you can thug on humans merely for having long think and this is what they support because they want to shut down all opposition to the power that they have just cutting off competition that's all it's about and I'm not going to read the rest of these headlines here. You can go to freedomist.com and find this and read it all for yourself. 